How about now? There we go. Hey, even oh. I can hear me. Okay. <clears throat> what do you know? <laughs> All right. We're getting it. Yay! Yay! <laughs> now, I've never done uh, YouTube before, so I don't even know if I have to be the moderator or what. Add a moderate. Oh, okay. Well, there we go. Okay. Now then, let me get the the peoples that I trust and uh, get them to be <laughs> mods. Okay, there's one. I'll get Mr. Anthony also in there. Oh, Halo Sage, now you're just trying to, now you're just schmoozing me. Alrighty. Gabby, oh, I know you, Gabby. Guess what, you get to be a mod. I didn't know Gabby was your actual name. Oh, come on. Specified user does not exist. Whatever. <laughs> Watching YouTube stream. Oh, no. I haven't been sound in our video. All I see is videos not available. Oh. Hey, Quasar Shark. Well, there we go. That might be a thing that I might not be able to do the streams. Or, I might have to do two. Just because. So, don't you worry, even though he can't hear me. You just have to do two one on YouTube and one on Twitch. There you go. Maybe I'll just do like an hour here and then an hour on Twitch or something. We'll see. Or another time. I don't know. But thanks for everybody for coming out here. Holy smoke. Look at all of you. Hey, afternoon, Mr. Kirby. Oh, I love how they're not letting me add these people. There we go. Copy and... Will you accept this person? Yes, of course you will accept that person. How about this person? I'm right now I'm just setting mods because we all need mods. Come on. This is YouTube. I need mods more than I need <laughs> mods on, on, on Twitter. Ah, Gomer, yeah, we'll we'll get you. You get a mob. You get a mob. You get to be a mob. Featherweight gets to be a mob. No, that's okay. He's Canadian. He didn't get to be a mob. Oh, I'm sorry. Of course you get to be a mob. If if Mr. Kirby gets to... Mr. Zed Regulus gets to be a mob, then you get to be a mob. And I think I am about done. There we go. 
All righty. 58 people watching right now. Great to have you out here where you get to ask me questions. Now, like I said, the chat, I, I am kind of keeping the chat over here, and I'm keeping the chat over on, on, on Twitch as well so I can see. So pretty much if you just if you uh want to ask me a question I'm going to be going back and forth all day oh refined it satori a very beautiful tea place rare we'll have to when next time I'm down we'll have to go see that that would be a lot of fun what kind of specific tea would I be interested in? Actually, you know what? I'd just be interested in going there just to just to see it. Um, I like just seeing stuff. And stuff. How is the quality? Is there... Uh, what is the plan for the stream? Well, Shady, pretty much whenever I do my Twitch stream, it's all up in the air. Whatever I want to talk about. I uh, I talk about games a lot. And I talk about pretty much anything else. It's, uh... I, I usually go anywhere between food and music, manga, anime, geek stuff. I hope nobody is actually at Otakon watching this because you gotta enjoy Otakon. Yeah, it's kinda just like a, a you know, whatever we talk about. If people ask me a good question, one stream, two chats, no waiting. There you go. I say we Skype this and discuss the Doctor Awesomeness. Anthony, I think that's a good idea. Do I even have you on Skype? Of course I do. I have Emily on Skype. Where are you? There you go. There you are. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, hey, I am Higgins. I actually hate my hair right now. I, I really hate it. Uh, today, Sean is going to be sick. So, playing the part of Sean <laughs> as much as he can, we have Mr. Mr. Anthony Russell from from England. Hello. Hello. How are I, don't, you? I don't have Sean's Final Fantasy playing ability because I don't really play computer games. Um, actually, that's a lie. I do play one computer game because I have actually bought a computer game this year for the first time in about five years. Oh, really? um, and it's Franchise Hockey Manager. <laughs> <laughs> of course it is. Of course it's Franchise Hockey Manager. <laughs> well, what they, well, what they've done is they're the guys who they, they're the guys who've done a game called um, Out of the Park Baseball, which is this really, really intricate, really detailed uh, baseball simulator that's mm. really, really big with baseball fans, and they've done a hockey version. Um, and it's out in beta at the moment, so you can buy it cheap while they're doing all the beta testing, report bugs, and every so often and all that. Um, and then when they actually release the full version, you just get the license code straight away. And it's, oh, it's cheaper to buy it in beta than it will be when they release the full thing proper. Oh, wow. Yeah. And it's got the British leagues on it, which is really nice. Although their, co although their stats for the British players are rubbish. And oh. That makes sense. <laughs> it, it's it's interesting how they do video games like that. Um, I I knew that uh, Power Pros, they actually even worked very hard to make their faces accurate, but they really tried to make their stats accurate, and and I really like that when they do that on a video game. You know, um, yeah. they've been actually bringing out uh, Tecmo Bowl or Tech yeah Tecmo Bowl, um, the the NES game, but they change it every year and put in regular roster. I have not figured out if they put in the peop the player's actual stats. 
or if they just find somebody who has the actual, you know, the average stats, okay, who's was like, you know, Bo in these this day. Okay, we'll put him in there. You know, but yeah. uh but it is interesting. Yeah, it's a very it obviously will be slightly lost in translation because soccer's not as big a thing uh on on your side of the Atlantic as it is on mine. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Probably one of the biggest computer games because it just gave every single football nerd fanboy the chance to kind of to either manage their team, manage the national team, take a team a really crappy team and try and make them brilliant. And the best thing was is in some of the older versions they gave you access to the editor so you could just completely screw around with everything. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so no, that's like, interesting. Yeah, so you could create yourself in the game and put yourself like as a team or as a free agent and you could you could just sort of go to the um you know go balls to the wall and have all kinds of crazy stuff with it but they don't i don't think they let you do that anymore i haven't bought a football manager game for quite a while mainly because as well you, you've known me for quite a while now i yeah. it's kind of surpassed football um for me wow but, um, but it still it still is probably one of the but along with fifa obviously um those games are probably the biggest selling ones here along with all the usual things, you know, like Halo and, mm -hmm. you know, Call of Duty and Black... And, well, I, I, don't, I don't know. I don't play... You know, I don't play shooting games. <laughs> well, and, and it's kind of interesting. I was actually talking with several people uh, at uh, Con Bravo in Canada when I went, and many people were actually even saying, you know what, I, I've stopped watching regular football and, and started watch, watching a proper football. Uh, and start getting into that, and that that's really interesting. Uh, that that it is, well, at least at this moment, and at least with some of the people that I know from Con Bravo <laughs> getting bigger in Con Bravo. Where, where was Con Bravo? Where in where in Canada is it? Uh, that was in uh, that was in uh, near Toronto, in a place just outside of Toronto. Uh, um, so like Mississauga or something. Like that. Yeah, yeah. It, it was it was about an hour away. And it was. It's uh, interesting you say that though, because Toronto FC are awful. It's so bad. So so bad. <laughs> we need to. Uh, because like, I still I still watch I still watch a fair a fair amount of football, and I still keep tabs on a, on Major League Soccer because you know sport. Yeah. But yeah, it's it's interesting to hear people that close to Toronto saying that because because TFC are just. <laughs> There's nothing but the word now. They are just. <laughs> Speaking of simulators, I've been interested in train simulators, big in Japan. Yes, actually, uh, Super Riles, they're they're huge in Japan. Um, then should they go? I I would very highly suggest. Uh, then should they go? I I have a video on on a couple of the versions of Then should they go? Uh, very very good stuff. Um, train simulators is it's definitely not my thing, mm -hmm. but I can kind of appreciate why people would be into those kind of games because there's an element of kind of like accuracy and intricacy and concentration and, and almost kind of puzzle solving to a to a degree because you know there's you know driving a train is probably not an easy thing and it's probably not an easy thing on a simulator either so oh, I, yeah. I, I, can, I can dig why people get that oh yeah and it, it was uh you know when i've played it it's just a lot of fun because it really is very much like uh, you know, you have to be pinpoint accurate, and it's even more impressive because when you live in J uh, or when you visit Japan or live in Japan, you see how pinpoint accurate they are with these huge machines, and so these tiny little simulators, you know, it's it's a lot different. So, <laughs> so um, obviously not modeled on British trains. Then. Yeah. <laughs> oh, uh, are they? I, I know nothing about uh, British trains or anything. Um. You know what? I want to keep this stream light and fun, so let's. <laughs> I use oh, what I will say is I use trains a lot, and the, the issue is, and and and, and again, you, you know, you, you know me. There are there are some certain things I like and certain things I don't like. Mm. We have privately run trains in Britain, and some of the companies that run run different parts of the country depending on where they are. Some companies are better than others, um, and that's probably the polite way. Of, of doing of, it, of and it's that. probably it's probably no great irony that the worst company for running trains is called First Great Western, because <laughs> <laughs> mm. they're first in something. They're, they're first in something. <laughs> but no, tra train simulators are interesting. When I when I lived in Germany, and when I, I don't I don't think they do it anymore. But way way back in the day, when I when I used to start um, 
when I sort of went over the journey for the first time, and for those people on the street who were quite new, uh, the older ones will know this, but the new ones won't. Right? I'm fluent in German, and I've spent a lot of time there. Where, what they used to do late at night on the TV channels is, um, you know, it's not like now where they'll just like you know show endless like repeat episodes of bits and pieces. But on one, of, I think it used to be like their equivalent of like what we would call BBC One, I suppose what you guys would call ABC, mm -hmm. like the first channel on the dial. Through the night, they'd essentially play a rolling tape where they'd stuck a camera to the front of a train and just pressed record. And that's what it would be. It would be out of the front of the train, going down the tracks from, you know, from like one town to another. And this would fill up the gap in the middle of the night on like TV station. Wow. You know, because there's a game that I have on the PS2 my brain's not, my brain's passing over it. Um, but it's essentially that. You, you see, when, what you play is actually recording of the train. And so when you go slower, they just slow it down. If you go fast through an area that you're supposed to go slow in, well, then guess what? You, they speed it up. So you actually see it. But yeah, and then when you slow down, they, they have, so they have the entire track there so you actually see the track as it goes and it's a brilliant it's a brilliant thing it's a uh, come on uh, uh, oh there it is and I'm trying not to stand up so you don't see my bum but yeah train simulator and then should they go uh, this is this is the one that I would probably suggest if you want something that because train simulator and then should they go are two different games but they came together for this one, and uh, this one actually has video from the front of a cart uh, of a train. So, yeah, lots of fun. <laughs> I would highly suggest that. But that's not why we have you here, Anthony. And yes, uh, Anthony is very Britain, practically. Um, I do have the t-shirt. You do? Oh, you have a Captain Britain t-shirt? Oh, that's cool. But uh, we want you to, uh, we're here. Also, I have you on here because I want to talk about Doctor Who. Yay. Yay. Now you and I are very excited for this new Doctor. Tell me why you are excited. Um, I'm excited for a variety of reasons, really. The one thing I will say, actually, is that I ended up watching the show live on Sunday. Um, I... Wasn't feeling very well for the. Um, I mean, um, you, you knew I had my wisdom teeth pulled, right? Yeah. No, I didn't. Oh, no. that's a right. I, I had them pulled a couple of days before my birthday. I, I had them. I had them done under anaesthetic, and I've slowly been kind of like getting over that because it obviously, you know, it throws your body for a loop. I tried to do too much too quickly. I kind of crashed and burned, and I, I just on Sunday, I just crashed and burned. I was going to go out with. Uh, I was going to go to church with them. And I just didn't feel up to it. She couldn't move properly, um, and I thought, you know what? I'm just gonna, em, you go. You're, you know, you're, you're feeling all right. I'm just gonna stay here, and I'll just lie on the couch. And I genuinely just felt awful. And Em just goes, fine. But if you're staying here, you're texting me who the new doctor is. I'm like, fine. <laughs> <laughs> so I sat there and I watched it. I'm, I'm excited because I think, I mean, aside from, aside from, you know, the general sort of interest, all you know, different doctor, different way of doing it. Peter Capaldi is a really, really good actor. And he's going to add a different kind of gravitas to this role yeah. that Matt Smith just can't give it because of his age. Now, I prefer Matt Smith to David Tennant. That's going to be quite controversial for a lot of people. Because my, but my issue with David Tennant was he humanized the Doctor too much. And that's not the way it's meant to be. We're not supposed to relate to the Doctor. And that's my, been my great belief. We're supposed to relate to the people around him. Mm -hmm. Because he is the conduit through which the story goes, our way into it as the viewer, isn't supposed to be relating to him, it's supposed to be relating to the companions. And where Tennant, and to some extent Russell T. Davis's writing played up to it, was he humanised the Doctor too much. Matt Smith was a wonderful oddball, and they made the Doctor more alien again. And that, and hopefully, because Capaldi is a good enough actor and has the chops to be able to do it, that is going to continue, and he won't become... Well, he, he won't become, he won't sort of regress back to sort of tenant human, human emo whininess or just kind of like become a giant parody of his Malcolm Tucker character, mm -hmm. think of it. Uh, I, I, I completely agree. I, I think that's why I had such a big problem with the Doctor getting married as well, because it was, 
the doctor doesn't get married, especially to a companion. It's, it's, he's the doctor. He's supposed to have mystery to him. And, and when you, the moment you put in romance, and I, and I do know that there are a lot of people griping that Peter Capaldi wasn't a very young, you know, stylish, one degree, what's it, you know, what boy so bandish type of guy. Exalted. Yeah. He, you know, he's, he's an older gentleman. And I hope that this takes romance out of the picture, just straight out. It's an interesting one, that one, because I think to some extent they kind of put it in firstly because... Doctor Who now is kind of appealing much more to uh, to people en masse. It's not this kind of thing that's kind of shoved to one side anymore. And people do like a good love story, you know, irrespective of, uh, irrespective of whether we, we think that should or shouldn't be in Doctor Who. Mm -hmm. There is that element that there is that element to it. But also, it's a side that's never really been explored to the Doctor. There's always kind of there's always been undertones with bits and pieces, but it's never really been. It's never really been explored, and everything's been, you know, the Doctor's always been this sort of kind of at arm's length kind of guy from everybody, and it's certainly a different dimension to, uh, to type to a Time Lord character to have more of those things in there because it's quite, you know, it's a, it's, a, it's an interesting point. If Time Lords look like us and they're interacting with people, why wouldn't a companion or someone he comes across find them physically attractive? You're right in how it, there's a way to do it and there's a way not to do it. Yeah. And every single female companion, bar Donna doing it, just gets a bit stupid. Yeah. Because that's just not the way it, you know, it's just not the way it works sometimes. But I, I don't necessarily have a problem with it, but they kind of have to do it right. And that's where it's, I, I think sometimes that's where it's fallen down. And as we've already readily established on this stream, Moffat can't write women to be now. And it's not that I have anything against Moffat. I, I actually, some of his stories are, are I, I really enjoy the stories. It's just that he, if the Doctor had become a female, the, the whole show would have gone to hell. Um, which I'm, so I'm glad that he didn't. And uh, I don't think the Doctor should be a female. Because there are time lord genders readily established. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I you either, have you either to find agree. the way to pull Romana out of the time lock bubble, or you don't have Doctor Who as a female. I'm mm. sorry, and, and uh, that's that's not me being sexist. It's a case of a character is readily established as being a bloke. Have him be a bloke. I don't see the problem with that. I yeah. admit someone like Idris Elba would have been really interesting as the Doctor. That would have been quite cool. Yeah, who, there and were I, there were several people who, uh, okay, brain not working. Uh, hold on, I'm, I'm searching up on Wikipedia who I actually thought would have been made a, a brilliant doctor. Uh, Patterson Who's Joseph. Who, sorry? Patterson Joseph. Well, he was considered for 10. Yeah. He was very heavily in the running for 10. Um, but I believe something that Moffat said on the show on Sunday night is that actually really, really rings true. The person who ends up being the doctor is the right person at the right time. That's true. And, uh, and, and I think actually, you know what, Patterson Joseph's time to be the Doctor may well have passed, and that's you know that's no slight against Patterson Joseph because he's a really he's a really fantastic actor. Yeah, I think if they were going to make him the Doctor, they had to make him ten, or him not. And uh, I think unfortunately that ship has, has sailed for him on that. On that yeah. Side. yeah, that that that's true because he, uh, he he did say that uh, uh, Moffat did say that he had considered him for ten or for eleven was it. And uh, he just like, no, nah, I'm just gonna wait, just gonna wait. So, so we'll, we'll, yeah. But I, I do like the idea of him, of of. You know, I think he's gonna bring a nice. Where where we really needed the humor with Matt Smith. I mean, because it was getting way too emo with with David Tennant. Where, where we were getting, and we needed that humor that Matt Smith brought back, and that's why I really like Matt Smith because he brought back fun. the The very first episode was so good for me because it was fun, and and he was learning, and 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 he wasn't a moody doctor. And I think now with Peter Capaldi, I think now we'll have. Okay, we've had our fun. Now let's get more into adventure. And and somebody in the stream. 
on Twitch did say that uh, they didn't think that, that they would be uh, doing uh, what was it, uh, John Pertwee-ish. I think it actually will go more to the action because he's fit. That's not like, yeah. He's fit, so I'm thinking there will be some more running in the uh, the quarries and swinging off of, uh, you know, <laughs> I was going to say chandeliers, but that brings something completely else to mind. <laughs> hey, 18 Mysteries, I, I, pre I appreciate that you think the Doctor, the Doctor could be a girl. And like I said, there are quite a lot of people who've argued very eloquently that the Doctor should be a woman. I'm just of the opinion that Time Lord genders are pretty heavily established in, in canon for the show. And I think to kind of muck around with that just for the sake of it, I don't think is right. I think if the best actor for the role would have been a woman, and they all sat down and said it, and, and said, you know what, you know this 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 lady is the best person we have to do this, then that's fine. Um, but like I said, it, it would it would you know there, there's precedent for bits and pieces. You, you know, Chancellor Flavia, Romana. Unless you're going to find a way, and I'm, I haven't seen it done to establish a changing of genders, then I don't think you can. I don't think it will fly mm. because. Uh, th though, you are, though you are right, yes, it would be nice if we had a writer who, you know, didn't wouldn't just make loads of like, ah, I now have boobs. What do I do with these things? Look, they jiggle. Um, <laughs> which, would make, which would make really interesting Saturday Night TV. Oh look, um, I've got Dalek bumps too. Oh, I see. I see the on switch. <laughs> to yeah. to quote it's, the it's other. Tough, it's it's a really tough one because you know, I I appreciate the point that a lot of people make, and Doctor, the Doctor. And particularly if you put this in the context of, um, of British television, not just like world television, but British television, because, you know, Doctor Who's a popular thing, but it's ours, you know, it's a British thing. And <laughs> Diamanda Hagen, for all of my, for all of, you know, for all of the things that she says that I agree and disagree with, argues the point very eloquently, you know, that this is a really, really iconic thing in British television. And it would, and people have made the argument very, very well that, you know, why can't it be someone who is, you know, black or Asian or female or transgendered or any, or any bits and pieces like that? And you know what? If the right person came along to do it, I'd be totally cool with it. Yep. But the person that they've chosen is re is going to be very, very good, providing he's given serviceable writing. Because um, uh, that, of course, is, you know, as, as you and I have discussed previously away, away from here, the curse of Colin Baker. Colin Baker was a very, very good actor, and he's been serviced brilliantly in, in Big, Big Finish, Finish Audio. Yeah. But he's never, he put on TV, he just got shit cat. <laughs> um, he, yeah. he got pooed on from a height so high, it was flying past Chris Hadfield on the International Space Station. <laughs> well, and his, uh, and because my brain's not working right now with, uh, with anything, his uh, iconic uh, big Finnish companion. I mean, there we go. We we've got you know somebody who's who's much older and a female, and they have everybody. If you don't know what we, if you don't know what we're talking about, yeah. it, it, it. And I forget her name. Come on, help me out. Starts huh? with an E. Is that Oh, Smythe. No, okay. She, the two of them work off each other so very well and and, and the, I, I really think that that's the way that a relationship should be because he gets a relationship with her like he gets with no other companion or at least that has been written I mean Tom Baker obviously had you know Sarah Sarah Jane but it wasn't written like the ones with Colin Baker and, and, and Evelyn, I, I sort of equal footing to some extent, but it's different. I, yeah. I don't know. It, it's. Well, I think the interesting thing is, is that, and I think it's possibly a, a quirk of the thing, is that obviously the Doctor is meant to be very, very old comparatively to humans, mm -hmm. and yet he, he runs around the majority. Of, if you go sort of up to that point of the sixth Doctor, he's run around with the majority of people who have been. Either sort of you know relatively young and naive, or sort of people you know sort of out for adventure, and suddenly he's confronted with a companion who, contextually, if you, you know humans are time lord, she's seen a lot and done a lot. She is quite you know, and maybe if she you know, 
similar sort of life stage, as it were. Mm-hmm. You know, not part the well past the point of um, of you know running you know running down corridors in high heels. They are people who are travelling <laughs> because they you know they find you know it's out of interest rather than sort of naive want of adventure. Yeah, and maybe that's that maybe that's why it works so well. Maybe I also think that it's because she, she I, I like the companions that don't take his crap. You know, <laughs> no, who just Ooh, regulus? Yes, Frobisher. Bring Frobisher to television. Oh God, Frobisher would be awesome. They had a com- somebody that they talked to who was named Frobisher in one of the episodes. The only issue with them putting Frobisher on TV would be how they did it. That would be the really, really because it would be really, you know. CG, you know, CGI bits and pieces. If you're going to put a four foot penguin on television, it needs to be done properly. Um, and that's the big issue, of course. And of course, the BBC, you know, they've got, you know, they've got the money and the resources to do that. Oh, well, they could totally do it. So yeah, but it, but it's just how it's just how that how that they do it. But I would, I would totally. You, the, the, I think actually the one problem would be is that quite a lot of people would like it, and, and a lot of sort of the really hardcore Who fans would like it because they're familiar with the comics. And they're familiar with you know with the big finish bits and pieces, mm-hmm. but the um, the casual fan would suddenly turn around and go, "Why the blue hair is there a four foot penguin on my television? What's going on? I don't understand this." <laughs> You've got a this point. Is just, oh, this is this is just a marketing thing to get the kids in. Oh look, Doctor Who's got a fluffy companion. Is like every hardcore who knows, like, no, it's rubbish. You stupid person. <laughs> yeah, if anything, it only have to be. It would only be for an episode. Yeah. In all honesty, if if they were going to be thinking about it that way, it would have to be only in an episode, which would be okay. I mean, it'd be like a Sarah Jane thing where it'd be in an episode, and you're like, "Oh, yay, she was back!" You know, "Yay, I got to see K nine again before he exploded." Um. <laughs> has been, he's, he has, like, as far as I'm aware, he's only um, somebody in the somebody in the chat. Do correct me if I'm if I'm wrong, but to my knowledge, he's only been in two Blue Finish audios anyway, of which I have both. Um, because he's Frobisher and he's the man, yeah. or the Wiffadil. Oh, there you go. Yeah, uh, Shinigami said, uh, "Yeah, it was in Torchwood that there was a Frobisher, and he was played by Capaldi." Yes, that's absolutely right. Sweet. That's where I remember it, <laughs> and I'm sure Capaldi was like, "Now you've got me in a Torchwood thing, and 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 I'm called Frobisher." Awesome. <laughs> He no told- of like near, near, the, near the train station in the centre of Southampton, there's an office building called Frobisher House. Really? And I chuckle every time I walk past it. <laughs> you- so, and every, the people I'm with, why, what's so funny? I was like, the building's called Frobisher. Why is that funny? Don't worry. Just don't worry. <laughs> Just walk along. Just walk yes, don't on. forget the fires of Pompeii. Not my favourite episode, I must confess, of New Who, mm-hmm. but certainly certainly very well done. Yeah. I enjoyed it, but it's, it's definitely not my favourite. <laughs> Yeah, that would be the yeah. It, it it was good. What was your favorite? Uh, what was your favorite episode of the new Who? I was I was going to say of new Who because if we're including the classic, then there's no, then none of the new Who. Then none of the new Who. Yeah. Um, favorite of new Who. It's interesting. I'm probably going to have to go back to probably back to Eccleston and say the Doctor dances. Really. Actually. Yeah. There's there's something about the end. I'll, I'll include that in the entire two parter, and it's only really because it just builds up to just such a fantastic end because it addresses. I think for me anyway, as someone who has watched a lot of classic who, who has a lot of classic who, and then is greeted with this thing, and, and you know, it's just that bit at the end. You know, just this once, everybody lives, and you, you know, for people who've watched a lot of Doctor Who or even haven't, they're aware that people. You know, people die in episodes, and it's kind of one of these things that kind of gets breezed over, and it gets talked about in, a lot in audios. You know, there's a time to grieve later, but actually, for one, you know what? Screw it. Actually, everyone's going to survive this one, and it kind of met one of the things that one of the sort of the staples of Doctor Who flipped it on its head, but didn't ruin it. Yeah, it wasn't done stupidly. It was done in a way that made sense. It kept with the storyline. It was. You know, it was well written. It was well executed. It was actually Moffat at his best, um, because that is a Moffat one, obviously. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, but, and, but I think that's just why. And it's not that it's not that anything that hasn't been done since then is hasn't been good. 
the fact that the the sequence with all the doctors and Matt Smith walking through the hologram in, the, in his first episode is just sublime. But I think that's I think that's just my favourite, just because it's kind of a complete. You know, it, it, you know, starts well, middle is good, cliffhanger good between the two episodes, end good. Yeah. And I think it's just it, it's just so solid beginning to end across two episodes. And considering how fast paced this is, you know, there are there are lulls in um, certainly in some of the two parts that happen. But I think that I think it just hits it hits um, everything so well that I think it, I think that's probably why I like it so much. Well, and I also that's also very interesting for you to say because you don't need much care for uh, Christopher Eccleston. As an actor, he's fantastic. As the doctor, I think, the sh- I think his attitude to the show has been atrocious. Oh yes, I, I completely um, agree. But no, I, I think actually, as a, I think as a doctor, and uh, and hindsight, hindsight is twenty twenty. Looking back on it, his series is actually really, really good. Hmm. I don't think um, I'm not the greatest fan of Russell T Davis's writing at times, hmm. but the series is, is you know looking back on it and kind of looking at it as a whole rather than you know sort of looking at individual episodes. Um, I think as a whole, it's actually, you know, it, I think it stands up really, really well. There are good bits and bad bits, and you can, and I think this is probably my, my criticism, particularly of some of the people within, um, within sort of tickle tiggy bits and pieces and sort of the review of us, as it were, mm-hmm. um, is that people sometimes kind of nitpick a bit too much. Yes. And I think they're looking for everything to be a bit too perfect. And I think, you know, and it's, you know, for, for, for as, as, as intelligent and articulate as his arguments are, I agree with virtually. I don't agree with national thought on Doctor Who bits and pieces, but um, but I think I think that entire Eccleston series is really really well done, um, and I think I think actually it will get a lot more credit in the future for what it did in context of the whole thing, because you know Eccleston came in, is all set up, uh, you know, and he no- he knocked it down, he ticked all the boxes, had a good had a good start. Solid series, solid departure, but like I say, his just his attitude um, yeah. to the entire thing is just it's just sad, really. I think it, I think it's a real shame that he's kind of um, he's kind of approached it as just another acting job. Yeah. Uh, which if you're if you're a one part character, maybe then fine. Uh, you know, uh, but certainly, hopefully, the person who played Adam in the first series uh, just approached it as just another job. <laughs> um, that character was rubbish, but you know I think the other people have kind of embraced it. And certainly, Billy Piper's embraced it, which is you know which is really really good because obviously she's gone off and done a variety of things. Or in the case of uh, Confessions of a Call Girl, pseudo porn. Yeah. Um, but but yeah, it's just such a shame about Eccleston. He's so talented and he did so well, um, but he just doesn't get it, and that's really sad. Yeah. Now and going back, Peter Capaldi, he gets it, and yes. he will get it. Well, he does get it. No. The infamous letter to the Radio Times he wrote as a fifteen-year-old. They read out. I saw. I saw that, and uh, you know, a lot of these things. I'm not sure if they're real, but I guess you, you, you know, I guess that was real. So it was. That's that's very refreshing. You know. It's, yeah, yeah. It's always nice. And that's to know. what it was. I mean, ra- ra- the Radio Times used to be produced by the commercial arm of the BBC. Mm-hmm. So it's essentially the BBC producing the TV guide, um, if, if the Americans want context. Mm-hmm. But, they, um, but yeah, you know, people sort of write letters in, and, you know, you know, just like in, you know, sort of comic books in the back or magazines and bits and pieces of that, and it, and it was like that, you know. And and it's it's really, uh, you know, it, it's refreshing in, in that sense, as, as was a bit where he sort of said, you know, I've played the Doctor before, but I haven't played him since I was nine. And it's just like, ah! <laughs> and the little, the little part, the little part, there was a little part of me that did, uh, that did pop for that. I really liked that. <laughs> but yeah, the Doctor Dance is really a, a spectacular episode, just like you said. And I, I was going to also say, um, actually, the face on on <laughs> Christopher Eccleston as, as he's making the things spoiler alert uh as he's making the things go out the little nanites go out i I just see that and i and the look on his face and like you said he he's a brilliant actor and and he it looked like he was finally just you know what i've got this 
and a passion in his face. And and yes, I completely agree. That's that's such a good good episode. So many other people, however, say that the the doctor's wife is their favorites. And and I I, I almost got to say that it's one of my favorites as well because it just it it brought together, you know, for after, you know, 49 years this these this pairing that had never been able to really, really talk to each other before, and he, Neil Gaiman, just wrote that so well. What, what, what do you think about that episode? Isn't it, the concept is is brilliant. Um, the, I think the thing with, I think the the mild issue I had with it was, I think the. Um, I think the, the relationship between the Doctor and the TARDIS has always been that um, has always been that kind of thing where where what I enjoy about it is is that where where like I say we're not supposed to relate to the Doctor a great deal as a person we can all relate to the idea where we anthropomorphize something that we have be it our car our guitar our pets. Um, bits and pieces like that. That's a really, really human thing um, where we kind of imbibe stuff that we have with the personality. Mm -hmm. And that's something I always really enjoyed about the Dr. TARDIS relationship was that the TARDIS is a fantastic machine. It is possibly the greatest you know, machine in the universe in the fact that it can travel in time. But the Doctor kind of treats it in the same way that, you know, like my sister treated her first car, you know, like my sister, <laughs> my sister gave her first car, in, I, not that I remember what she called it, but she gave it a name, and she, you know, sort of talked to her, you know, like, she, you know, starting up and just giving her a bit of problem, um, you know, you know, you know, oh, you know, come on, you know, come on, Cecil, whatever she called it, you know, come on, you want to start that kind of thing, and that's actually something I really enjoyed about the relationship with the, um, with the Doctor and the TARDIS, and I think literally humanising the TARDIS I think to some extent kind of took something away from it. But 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 by the same token, I, I totally appreciate why people really enjoyed it because, you know, there's always been that sort of, you know, the TARDIS isn't doing what the Doctor wants, so you, you know, so he'll give it a mm -hmm. give it a smack. Not that you should do that in a human sense if someone doesn't do what you want. <laughs> um and it, and it, and to be fair, if I try that, M would just punch me back even hard. So what, <laughs> what, what good would it achieve for me? Um, but no, I, I totally understand why people do it. I actually, as a in terms of the episodes, games written, I prefer his Cyberman episode. Um, really? Because I think because I think well, I think he I think he's brought the Cyberman back and undone the damage that Russell T Davis did to the Cyberman. Um, no, and I what? disagree. And someone, someone's going to say it. Oh, they turned the Cyberman into the Borg. No, you can't turn the Cyberman into the Borg because the Cyberman were there first. Borg are knockoff Cybermen, right? <laughs> they really were. They really okay, were. Right? And um, and we'll and we'll rock and we'll rock it from there. Because after Trotton I mean, episodes, maybe, <laughs> maybe, yeah, maybe Nightmare in Silver isn't the greatest ever episode of Doctor Who ever written. It's certainly not the best Cybermen episode. But what Gaiman has done to the Cybermen is he's re-established them as a credible threat, and it's the one thing that Russell T Davis just ruined for the Cybermen. He made them too soft, and he made them too easy to beat, and it's what um. It's what get you know. What, the Doctor defeats the Cybermen in Nightmare and Silver. So, uh, why am I even going to say spoiler? Alert? It's the internet, people. Uh, <laughs> spoilers, sit in a box. Um, but it, it, the Doctor had to be really creative and work really hard to beat the Cybermen in Nightmare and Silver. Whereas I don't think he really had to in some of the episodes that um, that uh, the Russell that the, in the, the in the Russell T Davis era and other writers did for them. They made them too. Uh, they made them too easy to beat, and I think Gaiman's given them back some of their air of uh, uh, not not invincible. Doctor Who was ever invincible, but you know what I mean. He made them a bit more credible as yeah. a threat. Well, they were they were only defeatable by gold dust or, or other things that were you know comparable to them in strength. You know, well, ra radi radiation then gold dust. Yeah, uh, they're well, well, they're just getting blown up in a spaceship. Yeah, and, and, and other electrical things and the five doctors. Uh... Yeah, or, 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 get, or getting shot with spears in the five doctors. That's true. That's true. Yeah. How should I defeat the Cybermen? A harpoon! <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 and I still love that move, that show. I, I really do. That was just... The five, doctors, the five doctors, of course, the first ever Doctor Who DVD. Really? 
Yes, it was the first ever first ever one, and we had the old version. We had the original, the original original version. Uh-huh. Um, but when they updated it, we did get rid of it and passed it on to a friend. We never. Um, we always try and give our Doctor Who DVDs away if they if we get like the updated or like you know like version you know like anniversary version with like better because some of the early ones mm-hmm. had no special features. Yeah, and that that first one it had completely different. Um, a completely different style of like DVD menus and bits and pieces like that, and um, and it, you know the DVD was just you know sort of the bare bones like we're we we we're, we're going to try this out let's put out the five doctors because it's something people will buy because people love the five doctors kind of thing, but yeah it was the, it was the first one and it's been a it's been a it's been a fantastic ride ever since wow. he says staring he says staring at his. Is an Emily's entire collection of Doctor Who DVDs. Vast collection. Well, I'd be afraid to, to come to your house, you know, if you say, oh, just, you're, you're in England, why don't you pop on over? And, uh, no. No, because we would come in, I'd say, hey, could we watch that episode? And we'd be there the entire week. Nah. <laughs> well, to be fair, em- Emily and I do, there is a, there is a, a chunk of disagreement in, within uh, within the Russell household as to... Uh, as to some of the episodes, because there's some that M really likes and there's some that I really like. And the one that we do have constant arguments about, and it's going to sound really silly, but I absolutely love this episode and Emily hates it, is Delta and the Bannermen, um, which is the seventh Doctor and Mel. Yeah. And you know what? There are bits of it that are rubbish. But I love the story and I love the I love the overall idea. And I think if you if you can't suspend your disbelief as a Doctor Who fan, you're probably trying to enjoy the wrong show. Yeah. And you should go and watch something like really, really naff instead. <laughs> so I don't have to like trouble you. But um but yeah, there are bits of Delta and the Bannermen that are that, that I admit readily are rubbish. Ken Dodd, um, who just Americans won't have any idea of, but he was just like a a British comedian. He was fa- he was famous for carrying around something called a tickle stick, which is essentially just a feather duster, and just making really, really bad jokes. And he's in that episode as the guy, as like the, like the toll bloke at the space station, like right at the beginning. And that is stupid. It's so stupid. But um, <laughs> it's still one of my favourite episodes, and Emily just hates it. <laughs> She's like, this is rubbish. I'm like, watching it. It's awful. And it's like, because I love it so much, because the stories are so fun, and I enjoy it. Well, a lot of the Seventh Doctors, I mean, he's my favourite Doctor, I mean, but there are a lot of his episodes were just, like you said, just rubbish. They were just not very good. Uh, the was, Dalek was one was very the good. Giant, dirty, massive man. <laughs> the Dalek one was very good. The Dalek one was very good. Uh, written, uh, written, of course, by Ben Aranovich, former member of the British Communist Party. Really? Yes, indeed. Uh, <laughs> it, there were a lot of a lot of writers um, sort of involved with things in the BBC in the eighties who, for some strange reason, were members of the Communist Party. We're not entirely sure why. I'm better the communists than the Nazis. <laughs> that, that's true. That's true. Oh well, what, uh, what were some of the others? Now, and I'm also, and I also yes, mentioned and this. As the court said, at least it's not the happiness patrol. Yes, <laughs> giant bird, that's it, man. For the win. <laughs> now I had mentioned this to Emily. Um, by the way, people, I walked into the door. By the way. Oh, oh excellent! Excellent. Yeah, Stopped in from work. <laughs> but uh, I had mentioned to her that I'm actually hoping. That Capaldi, that they do with Capaldi what they were hoping to do with uh, Sylvester McCoy. In now, to to some of you in in the in the chat, they were actually going to make him a little bit darker. And you notice that his doctor at the very first part of his run, Sylvester McCoy, was very jovial, very happy, very silly, and he kind of got a little darker. And he he would occasionally, you know give Ace a push into an area that was really, really dangerous just because. And I was even wondering about that. And they really explore that a little bit more in the audio programs because there really are two different versions of the audio programs for Sylvester McCoy. There's the younger ones where he's with Ace and, oh, and everything's happy and everything. And then there's the ones, and you can even tell it in his voice. He gets a little bit lower in his register and he starts to become a little bit of a darker one, and when they did the Three Doctor audio program, uh, help me out, Anthony. What the Klein? The the fiftieth, uh, the fiftieth episode. Oh, um, Magoras or Mag- the Yeah. Yeah. The one yeah. You can definitely tell he is very dark in that one, and uh, 
and heck, even in the first one, he's uh, he's much darker. Uh, the very the very very first one, he's very dark in that one. So they were going to go a little bit more into that, and and maybe even suggest that he is much 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 older than he lets on. And I'm actually hoping that they do that with with this doctor with Capaldi. I think he could play a darker doctor, still fun but not silly. He's going to have a dark side to him. I, I just, I just feel it. It's one, it's certainly one thing that kind of comes out, um, in the, I, I sent you cold it's didn't I? The seventh doctor and ace, uh, one where they're, where they're in, they're, where they're in cold it's castle. Yes. Now, what they did after that was they brought back Clyde and there's a trilogy of stories that they've done. Which is the seventh Doctor on his own. Ace is gone by this point. Wherever she's gone, you know, shot as a Dalek hunter or wherever. But they did a trilogy of stories where he bumps in, where he re-encounters Clyde, because um, she obviously, uh, you know, she, uh, well, uh, again, spoiler alert, but you're on the internet, people. Um, where Clyde escapes at the end of Cold, it's obviously she drives off into the sunset. And you don't know what happens to her. He re the f he he re-encounters her in Kenya in 1956. At the time of the at the time of the Mau Mau uprising, which is when there's, you know the you know the sort of the native peoples of Kenya sort of went, uh, Britain, we 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 quite like to run our own stuff now. We're we're a bit fed up of, of a bunch of old annoying white people like suppressing our culture and stealing our mineral resources. Um, and he bumps and it kind of spread. You know there are three. There's um, uh, oh, let me remember what they call a thousand tiny wings is the one in Kenya, which is then followed by. Uh, oh, what are they called? But there's a, there's a, there is a Klein trilogy, and he gets very, very dark in that because there is a variety of things in there. Because Klein is a, for those of you who aren't aware, Klein is a time anomaly. She is a, she's created out of a divergent timeline from normal, and there's a bunch of stuff about you know, uh, very Doctor Who things you know about you know about changing the past, changing the future, but about about you know about the, the human elements of it and you know the sort of the interactions that people have with that and you have Klein as this person who is out of her own time she remembers a past that never existed and has friends and families and lo I mean, people that she loved who now do not exist or don't exist in the form that she remembers them and you know she's a woman so you know the doctor has broken everything he's remade time in his own image what well, you know how dare he do this I need to bring it back, and there's some very dark, dark Doctor stuff, particularly in the last uh, one of that trilogy called um, Survival of the Fittest, I think. Um, but it's very, very, he gets proper, you, you'd really like that because he gets proper dark Doctor. In oh, the, wow, I, I'm going to have to start searching for that then. Yeah, yeah it's, it, send me a, it, send me the, the names of the things cause, and, and, I'll, and I'll look for them because that, that sounds really, really tip-top. Yeah, there are. Uh, there we go. Uh, yeah, yeah, a thousand tiny wings is the first one. So it's a thousand tiny wings. Survival of the fittest story is the second one, and then the third one is the Architects of History, um, and that's the Klein trilogy. And uh, they are they are proper hardcore stuff, and it's really really um, like I say, you get you get dark, you do get some dark Doctor bits in it. Okay. You can also get some very traditional Sylvester McCoy. Sort of uh, doctor as well. No, he doesn't. Play the okay. uh, but he, um, but he does. Um, like I said, the, the end is the end is very. Oh, I'm looking forward to this then. Yeah, but definitely type them out in my Skype thing because I will. I will definitely forget. My brain's like one of those things that has a lot of holes in it. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> uh... There was a joke there somewhere. I. And somebody would say calen uh, colander, and I would say no, that keeps time, you know. But or, uh, anyways, <laughs> and and I'm hoping now. A lot I see the chat is talking about uh, the Valyard, and they're hoping that it's not who John Hurt becomes. That's. I think Hurt's going to be after the Eighth Doctor. You you really think so? I think because he's the whole thing at the end of the last series was Matt Smith saying. He, he wasn't good enough for the name of the Doctor. And I think that's an incarnation of the Doctor that did something so terrible that the rest of kind of the other Doctors don't see him as one of them. And I think maybe it might have something to do with the end of the Time War. That's my theory, anyway. I, 
I no, would. Actually, if you kind of squint, John Hurt does look like an old Paul McGann. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's true. That's true. Well, they've been showing Paul McGann in more Christopher Eccleston outfit. Yeah, have you that noticed? Was Paul McGann's, um, idea because he hated the costume from oh. the movie. Oh, I don't blame him, but, you know, Colin Baker had hated the, the costume from the show, and he doesn't get a choice. <laughs> I think the thing I love about Colin Baker was in the in one of the ones that they did flash animation for on the on the Doctor Who website ages ago, one called Real Time, where him and Evelyn encounter the Cybermen. Mm -hmm. oh, um, yeah, and it's um, where they go to a... where they get around having to animate the Doctor's multicoloured coat because they went to... they go to a funeral right at the beginning of the story. And the planet they go to, the color of mourning on that planet is blue. So he's wearing a blue coat, and he suddenly they suddenly get called away to go help with this, uh, with this, um, uh, with this, with this cyber threat. And he's still wearing the blue coat, so the animators didn't have to sort of animate all of these multicolored monstrosities that he used to wear. It's like, no, he just gets to wear a blue coat for six episodes. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> yeah, we're totally going to establish this right at the beginning. Didn't they? I, I've I've seen a picture of him in a blue coat. Before I, I don't remember where. Ah, um, remember some Daleks. That's why. That's she what. There too. Yes, and I actually really enjoyed that costume much more than the Joseph in the Technic color Doctor, yeah. you know, type of thing. That was a bad idea. It was a bad idea. It was a bad idea. But then again, Colin Baker maybe he shouldn't have asked for a you no know, leather jacket, you know. Yeah. I'd like leather jacket and, and vinyl pants, please. <laughs> <laughs> leather, ja leather jacket and vinyl pants. He is Doctor Who, not a member of the village people. <laughs> well, Paul McGann was lucky because he just went to the big Finnish guys and went, well, if you're going to do stories about the Eighth Doctor later on in his life, wouldn't he have changed his costume by now? And they went, yes, you're right. So he got to do a whole new photo shoot and, and change it to something a bit more different that would fit with the whole time war idea. So yeah. he was... He was lucky. <laughs> and see, and now that's where it comes in, you know, the my thinking, the Paul McGann, John Hurt, Christopher Eccleston thing myself, and just saying, no, it, it wasn't this time, it wasn't this time. But maybe even, you know, I've I've got some ideas that maybe even, because my brain goes in weird ways, you, you guys know that, that maybe there might be a Matt Smith merging with the, because... All right, the Tom Baker, the the whole Tom Baker one, where he changes into, I, 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 bear with me now, bear with me. You had the Watcher, and he was yes. just walking around, just oh, well, what is he? Oh, he he's me, and then they merge. He regenerates and they're like, what? <laughs> you know what? That could work. What if John Hurt? The watcher, what is he? He's a man with a meringue for a head. <laughs> 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 what if John Hurt is? He's fantastic. He had a meringue for a head. What if there is something with Matt Smith and the John Hurt, and they merge, and he becomes Peter Capaldi? Well, that won't happen until the Christmas episode. I don't know what how that would happen or anything, but what if that happens? It's interesting. You work. Well, he's regenerating in Christmas. He's not regenerating. Yeah. So he's have to spin out John Hurt hanging around for the 50th anniversary episode. It's going to be 90 minutes. It's going to be feature film length. Yeah. So this. Is, so it's going to be interesting to see what they do. And again, considering the pace, they'd have to do something really, really good to justify John Hurt's character hanging around for that long. Oh, okay. I didn't know. I see. I thought that in the very next one, that's when he he regenerates. Oh. No, it's, it's the. Um, the Christmas episode is where the regeneration Ah, okay. The Christmas episode. Yeah, we get the whole 50th kind of celebration and then he regenerates. Well, hey, a very Merry Christmas to you guys. <laughs> yeah, it feels like it should be more Easter than Christmas, but uh, sadly the, the timing's wrong. That's true, that's true. It, it'll be, it'll upset so many kids are going to be crying. <laughs> crying on Christmas Day again. Where's the one God? Where's the one reward? Where's the one reward? Well, there's that fantastic video that ended up on yeah, YouTube where well, someone like... Yeah, well, the Welsh she retweeted, uh, and I think I think I saw it because I don't follow Welsh on Twitter. I think it was see Farrah, you know, bless him, uh, in, in, bless him in his Boston cotton socks. Um, but it was literally like a camera pointed at this girl, and it's like they announced a new doctor, and her reaction to Peter Capaldi was just like, "What? Oh my God, he's ugly!" Ah! <laughs> it's just like, oh. <laughs> so, yeah, so many people are going to be 
so many girls I've talked to online who feel so upset that it's not anybody, that beautiful body is not young or uh, unattractive. They're like, oh, I really fancy the last three doctors and I really don't fancy him. And I'm like, that's not the point. <laughs> you're not supposed to. You're that's not the point. You're not supposed to fancy him. Steam for you, easy it. <laughs> I know the BBC would like to you fancy him because it means more viewing figures, but... Can't have fancy him all the time. Well, you know, I've talked to a lot of women and 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 a couple of gents too, and they uh, they actually think that he's quite handsome. And you know, yeah, come see, on, that, that's he's see, got a handsome that, face. No, it works for me, but then I like them kind of intense and opinionated. So it's not surprising. <laughs> that's true. So that's definitely why you uh, why yeah. why you I, married the bloke you did. I, I, my mom said, you were never going to marry anybody normal, were you? I said, no. <laughs> <laughs> Normality is a sub subjective construct and doesn't exist. Yeah, but there's normal and there's normal. But you know, at least, uh, at, at least, you know, you found somebody whose demons play along nicely with the one, <laughs> with your own. You know? Yeah, they, they kind of work. When I'm upset about something, he isn't. He's upset, I'm not. So one of us is usually relatively sane when the, when the other needs us to be. It works out very well. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I don't remember if UKIP appears on Channel 4 News. Yeah. I thought John Hurt was going to come back after the 50th. I, you, you know, Diagoras, I, I don't know. I, I, I don't, didn't think so. I would like to know why people don't think that the Valyard is the 13th incarnation. What Wasn't he supposed to be? He was supposed to be the last incarnation. The 12th or the 13th or the 11th? Huh? Valyard. Have you seen Trial of Time? Well, no, no, Trial of Time was the Master. No, yeah, but he was, no, he was, the Master was behind it. He was actually oh. the Doctor. He was either between the 12th and the 13th or the 11th and the 12th. And I can't remember which it is. Yeah. But, um, yeah, it was one of those two. It's been ages since I've seen that. I have. It's not a DVD I own. I've only seen it once. Yeah. Um, yeah. It, it, he was something like that. Emily won't buy Trial of Time Lord. Because it's rubbish, that's why I won't buy it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm but, sorry, it's just, I love Colin Baker, but the writing is so appalling. Oh, it was just, awful. I'm going to shave my head and marry Brian Blessed. Yeah, poor Harry. Woo! Oh. She wasn't a great companion, but it was a terrible, terrible ending for it. <laughs> hey, she was a good companion, just on mute. Yes, dear. <laughs> she, was, she, was, she was there for the dads. She was there for the dads. As the producer told her, she was there for the dads. <laughs> she of had, course, a, she of course, was... Peter Davison's regeneration scene completely, completely stolen by Nicola Bryant's clique. It's true. <laughs> <laughs> he always says, "I was doing my best acting." All anybody ever comments on is how well they can see Nicola Bryant's cleavage. <laughs> and now the new oh boobies. Yeah, that's true. Well, yeah, I think it was just solved Stephen Moffat's writing problem. Yeah. Well, and we got to see. Uh, I got to see uh, John Nathan Turner when he came to Colorado. For a Doctor Who convention here, oh, the the thing was pathetic. It was awful. It was, it was it was such a small little convention, and oh, it was pathetic. Um, regardless, I got to talk to him, and at first I wasn't sure about Sylvester McCoy, and I asked him, you know, why, why did you choose a a man who shoves ferrets down his trousers, you know, to to for a laugh? And he says, well, you know, one, you've got to realize that you know, a lot of women who are very respectable actresses, uh, you know, have done Playboy in the past sometimes. You know, it, it, it just happens. He just happens to stick ferrets down his trousers. And, you know, when ferrets go into a dark place, they tend to fall asleep. So it, it's really not, not, not as, you know, it's really more just him. And they just said, you know, it, and so he grew on me. Perry never grew on me. And I completely thought that she was American. And... Uh, occasionally I'd wonder, wow, why is she saying it like that? Oh, maybe she's from the north or something, you know. Lots of places have a north. Um, but then to come find out that she was actually British, I, I had a little bit more respect for her. To be fair to Nicola Bryan, it was her first job out of her. So, um, to be fair, when my, when my dad did watch Cave Strangers Army with me, the first thing he said was, where's that girl meant to be from? <laughs> <laughs> so, so clearly the accent was wandering in the first scene. And why she always rolls her eyes. Oh my gosh, I swear that they were going to pop out of her skull for a moment. They're just, oh. <laughs> well, it was just when they had the sixth doctor being quite grumpy and argumentative. 
argumentative and his companion also being grumpy and argumentative and it didn't really work when you have two people just basically bitching at each other the whole time. Yes. <laughs> so it's just a bad idea. But I think they got better in the audios. I think you know, the kind of relationship softened a bit, worked better. But at the time, yeah, mm. bad idea. You wouldn't get that nowadays, I have to say. Yeah. Oh, gosh. Like, Pitching each other for two people pitching each other continually is just politics, isn't it? Oh, hey. <laughs> hey yes. No, Adric. Then, like, Demented Demon brings up Adric. Oh. Oh, oh poor Adric. Poor Adric. Nobody Adric. likes a boy genius. Nobody liked Adric. We, we actually... We should. <laughs> when I was in, in high... Uh, jun no, I wasn't even in junior high then. I was, I was still in elementary school. We had... Uh, we knew that Adric was going to die in the next episode. And so we actually had a little party. All the Aww. little Doctor Who, you know, 10 to 12 year olds just having a little party. Yay! He's gone! I, I, I saw Titanic in the cinema once, and when Leonardo DiCaprio died, a few people stood up and cheered. <laughs> so the funny thing is, I remember seeing Moffat, Moffat talking about Adric. He was saying, well, people, you know, laugh about the fact that it was Adric and he was the most time and he got killed off. And he was like, the thing is, nowadays, I really couldn't get away with killing off a companion like that. I couldn't no. literally kill them because it would upset the children far too much. Yes. <laughs> now, here's a question. That, that, that brings up a very, very good point. And one that I've had a problem with, with Doctor Who for the past, well, for the past new Who. Besides... <sighs> Well, besides just a, you know, one or two, when are they going to bring in a companion that isn't a Christ child? I'd say, Hello well, there, I'm the impossible girl. Click, I, done. I would just settle for one that has a happy ending. Only Martha <laughs> has a happy ending. The rest of them have miserable endings. It's really depressing. Mickey. I know. I know in the old series, a few of them got married off impossibly quickly. And that was bad writing too. But I would prefer it if, you know, not every ending for a companion is utterly despairing and awful, you know? It's just, I think that's the best way to write yeah. it. That's, what, that's, that's all I'm Mickey had a, a, had a fairly good ending, didn't he? Martha had good endings, and that was it. Everybody else suffers terribly. Oh. I thought that, that, I thought that I was Mickey a, had a good ending. That happened to Donna, though. I didn't like Donna. Oh, I love Donna. She's been my favorite modern companion. I I've, really love her. Yes, I have to agree. I love Donna. Donna was. She's, she's the doctor's best friend. She's not in love with him. She tells him he's an idiot. <laughs> I want to make you if want to. If the doctor to walk around with somebody going, "Lord, will I be governor?" I'd have put Doctor Who in a story with George Formby. No, stop it. It was just a bit. There's there's a line between being friends and it just being a bit too cliche and matey, and I think yeah. that's the problem for me with Donna. Is that she kind of crosses the line into you know a bit sort of. I, I think it works. It's a pantomime. Plus, you can see that David Tennant and Catherine Tate really liked working together. Yeah. That's always nice to see. So, and technically, Amy and Rory kind of got a happy ending. It was by way of Weeping Angels. Well, but still, okay. Rory was rubbish. <laughs> I maintain this. Rory was a wet fish of a companion, and you could have done an entire series without him. Pointless. I don't think he was that bad. I liked their story. I liked the fact that she kind of realised how much she loved him and how much more important. Was to him the doctor. Oh, he was so good. dull. He was so <laughs> You don't think he was the, the goofy, the, the, the goofy sweet. companion? I know a lot of guys like that, and I think he was very sweet and, and really nicely active, and I loved their relationship. I thought, admittedly, why he didn't leave her because she was such a scrappy cow half the time. <laughs> what about Wilf? Doesn't he get. Doesn't he get oh, happy Wilf's after? awesome. No, that's true. Wilf is awesome, but he does get the kind of your granddaughter's gonna, you know, not be able to remember all the amazing adventures she had, which is kind of a downer. Yeah. Don't know who's the best in Sarah Jane. I'm gonna be really controversial. No, don't I, say I, it. I'm, I'm, uh, gonna, I'm gonna say it. I don't. I don't really care that much about Sarah Jane. I never did. I've not that big. I've never been that big on her. And um, that's okay. <laughs> that's okay. It's all the arguments we have. <laughs> Telling me this wrong. No, no, <laughs> I can. I completely understand why people don't like Sarah Jane. She she is a bit screamy, uh, but you know it's it's the points where she. I think really she, the companions I really enjoy are the companions who don't let the Doctor just you know walk all over them. The, I was uh, gosh, I was watching one. I can't even remember what it was, but uh, 
the doctor was like, no, no, I'm done. Time Lords are screwing me around. I'm just going to sit here until they're done. She's like, all right, well, I'm just going to walk over this way. <laughs> it, was, it was just very pleasant to see somebody go, hey, there you go. We're good. <laughs> I mean, Jamie's my favorite. That's, I just think he's awesome. Jamie, yeah. Jamie was a lot... Uh, yeah, I enjoyed Jamie. He what episodes I've seen of him? Having a best friend. <laughs> not having a best friend. Just, they're, they're just a great double act. And I think it's a shame you don't get male companions more often nowadays because they're kind of... The BBC kind of got locked on for thought that there needs to be a pretty young white girl in the TARDIS in order for people to watch and it'd be nice if there was more guys who were there less as hangers on and boyfriends but actually as companions what would you think about bringing back some of the old companions what you know like jamie for an episode well i suppose so, hines is up for it he really wants to do it i i, I think you i think this kind of goes back to the thing we were talking about um with like frobisher um uh, before em got in if you one shot them fine uh, I think to kind of bring any of them back for more than a one shot, I think it would just kind of kill some of the mystique. Yeah. I think it could work. I think Sarah Jane worked well in School Reunion, and Joe Grant worked well in Death of the Doctor and Sarah Jane Adventures. So I think one shots can work really well. I know a lot of the actors uh, would love to do it because they really want to. Amy Parks think that their kids and their grandkids can watch as well. So there's that really kind of being able to do something that their children can watch mm. and just be part of something that's really special to them. I think that's the issue with bringing Jamie back, of course, is memory wiped. Oh, uh, yeah, his memory has been wiped. That's a problem. And completely wiped. It's not, he, he, it's not even he remembers... No, he remembers his first adventure with the Doctor. Does he? Oh, OK. So he'd remember, the, he'd remember everything past the Battle of Culloden and that. That's but, yeah. it. And plus, he's probably dead, let's be honest. And there's no way they could see you. Well, they could see you, I'd phrase it, but that'd be weird. Mm -hmm. So, you know, just make him look younger. It'd be um, yeah, because he, uh, he was in that sixth Doctor episode, wasn't he? Yeah. Yes, indeed. Yeah. Well, we have, doctors, which is a bit weird. It's a bit of a weird episode. But, um, yeah, it's always good to see Patrick Trout. Yeah. This is very good. And, and, and... I'm sure probably feature kind of Patrick Trout and William Hartnell with 50, and probably their voices in some way, I would think, or clips of some kind. Yeah. Oh, I would... Not me. I'm a genius. <laughs> I, I, I would be very, very happy to have them uh, bring in the actor who's playing William Hartnell in the uh, adventures movie in uh, November. I'd, I'd be more Let, than happy to have him. Let's see him how that goes first. That's, David Bradley is a very, very good actor, so I'm sure they could, but it, I guess they I guess they probably won't do that until after that episode, though, I think. There's a good shout. I'd like to see Ace again. Yes. Yeah. She was going to be in Sarah Jane Adventures before um, Elizabeth Slayton before died. Elizabeth Slayton died. Yeah. So uh, Ace would be a fantastic one to bring back. Yeah, they were definitely going to bring her back they were going to bring a lot of the old companions back in the Sarah Jane Adventures as a good way of kind of seeing how they worked. So, oh, that would be wonderful. Like, now, okay, there there was one, I want to say Ivy Wild or, or who was the... who was Iris Wild Time. Well, Iris Wild Time. Oh, the mad one on the audio. What do you oh. think about maybe bringing her into one of the episodes? Because soon, because really, there was a, when uh, David Tennant first did those five solo ones uh, for that year, uh, as soon as I saw the double decker bus, mm, boom, that was hardest, wasn't brain it? totally went there. And there's the problem. She's a time lord. Yeah. Well, so is the monk. The the and so it well and Susan's Gallifreyan, but I mean nonetheless, yeah, she's still Gallifreyan. Yeah, I, I reckon Romana's knocking around somewhere, probably hiding in a Dimensions. Completely. I are off doing their girlfriend thing. Because <laughs> they're, they're, <laughs> they're, they're wonderful. I, I love them both. <laughs> yeah, I Katie Marie says, I want Captain Jack back and it has a little pokey out. Yeah, you, know, you know what? I think the show's actually moved on. And I don't think Jack coming back would add anything to it. Plus, anymore. John Barron's really busy in America at the moment, so I can't see him coming back. But he would for Doctor Who because he really does love it. Yeah. Yeah, and C. Ferris says he'd like to see Sir, uh, Susan return. I, I really think that even... I'd love Susan back. She would be great to see her in the 50th. Okay. Yeah, yeah, going into the, the future, <laughs> figuring him out, and, and, and saying, wait, don't I know you? And and him going, and then pff, clicking his, oh, you know, and oh, this is my granddaughter. 
What? And that would be perfect, actually, for Peter Capaldi's uh, doctor. Because he's older. Got a bit of more of the... Oh, well, this is... He would be the same age as William Hunt was, so he would work as her grandfather. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I would be very interested in seeing... Because I even had a, a, a storyline when I was a little kid that the doctor actually goes back to meet her. And her grandson has been making a time machine and he just happened to be making it out of this old police box that he saw just by happen chance and 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 you know of course you're you know 18 19 you're you're writing the stuff a specific way but i always thought that it would be interesting for him to go back and, and meet his granddaughter and then see that she's got a grandson or even a son and and who's interested in the same thing and then they go off together and a little familial thing. I think they finished it too, um, a Doctor Who about that. I think it was called um, An Unearthly Child and it was the eighth Doctor going back and finding out that Susan had a son. Um, he was actually played by Paul McGann's son. So there was a, a good kind of uh, connection there. Oh my I've goodness. Heard I've heard it's good. I've heard it's good. Oh, I'll have to, I'll totally have to look at it. Oh yeah. man. It, Brit, the, 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 the big finish uh, series is just so expensive here, so I can't... Yeah, it's still bad over here. You can download them, though, can't you? I think you can, yeah, you can download them. I know, I know, I know there, was, there was an email I got today that the first, I think the first 50, they now reduced the price of download. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Oh, well, you now... that check, though, because I don't want you to try, I don't want you to pay, like, three quid for something and then you can't actually listen to it. Oh, yeah. that's true, that's true. Well, that, that's... Well, I mean, an MP3, is it going to be an MP3? It's not like the, the old oh, uh, VHS tapes or anything. No. On that note, my good man, we are going to have to go because oh. my sister is due here shortly. We are going out for a, we are going out for a curry. Have a wonderful evening. Uh, have more than just one curry. It, uh, that's <laughs> me just playing around. <laughs> and, uh, uh, I love having you both on here. It's Gosh, I haven't had you on here sit for years. So. Yeah, yeah, indeed. Literally. 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 <laughs> well... You know, usual. I'm, I'm not going to sing Mr. Rogers to anybody. Please don't. That's, <laughs> that's, that's stealing your bit. But yeah, have a good weekend, everybody. Have a good Stay weekend. Safe. Take, Take care, care of yourself and somebody else and all that. You should come into. But uh, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll, uh, you know, look after yourself, dude. And like I say, if you can check out those ones with um, with Six Doctor and Fine, I think you'll really enjoy them. I will. I will. Thank you very much. Yeah, Cheers. No worries, dude. Take care. Bye. Bye. Oh, I. Cannot wait to go to England so I can actually give them hugs and 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 stuff. Those were my uh, my good friends for, gosh, the length of the uh, the since I've been doing this show. Emily and Anthony in uh, in Great Britain, fantastic to have them on, uh, talking about Doctor Who, which we're just big fans of. Um. Yeah, they're just wonderful. And thank you all for, for hanging on. We've been hovering at around 60, 63, 58, you know, around there. When in England are you going uh, you going to go? You know, Jessica, right now, not pl no plans to go to England. <laughs> no plans to go to England. Fami, you know... There's, uh, you're absolutely right. Uh, you gotta love international friendships, and it's all because of the interwebs that uh, that we can even have wonderful friendships like this. Um, no, I'm just saying, Der Cork, if if I ever am in England, which I would love to be. Um, so, and it's uh, and it's very nice to even uh, be able to. Have a little bit of uh, a little bit of internet fame, itty bitty little bit, uh, so that I can meet wonderful people like you guys. And uh, once again, don't use the chat on YouTube. The chat is very very slow and very very thin. Go to uh, Twitch.tv. There's a chat there, and that's where everybody's using that. So because the chat on the other one. It's just a little frustrating to use. But uh, glad to have everybody out here. How's the, uh, how's the YouTube working? I, I know that uh, we don't get a lot of, a lot of the, the um, 
my friends in uh, Germany can't do it. Or, or were you able to, you know, Dercork, you've been able to mention things fairly quickly. Are, were you able to find a way around not being able to? It's so, so, it, it's a trial. It's a trial, and if it doesn't work, then it doesn't work. If it if it doesn't work, then we'll then we'll use something. Oh, you need to use a proxy. Okay, so if you guys are watching this on the uh, the recorded version, you'll know to use a proxy. They have huge stoppages, and some are using proxy sites. Sometimes freezes, but the sound is great. Okay. Yeah, it, I think it's the, the YouTube glitch thing. I think I'll do every other Friday on this because um, we're, we're just trying this out. I, I hate to say this, but I'm going to say it because I'm truthful with you guys. Um, I'm doing it on YouTube for the YouTube monies because... I really want to make this something that I do. And now that I'm no longer with Machinima, yay. Uh, I really want to, uh, I really want to try and make this uh, work. And we are, I'm, I'm now with another group. And if I can get a little bit of Machinima monies, not Machinima monies, but YouTube monies through this, then I'm going to do that. Uh, I really shouldn't say anything against Machinima because when you talk about Machinima, you talk about all the people inside of it. I just have problems with the uh, with the people who run Machinima. And yeah, you know what? Selling out for me doesn't mean that I'm going to change anything besides, you know, it's not like the Wayne's World thing where they change the Wayne's World stuff. I only change things for the better. You know, that's that's how it works. So even if I do sell out in a way, it won't be all the way because I won't there's just some things I won't change. But yes, I, I when it comes to monies, yeah, I would Yeah, I was with Machinima Cody. Uh I just uh I was with them for almost two years and I was getting two things, jack and squat. Uh, I'd get a $25 check, $20 sometimes. What There was one month I got $18. And I was doing barely any anything on YouTube. Um, because people have this stigma against YouTube. Right now, I have no problems with YouTube. I just... My only problem with YouTube is that there's so many haters out there, and they just seem to be hitting YouTube. But, you know what? Maybe if I do videos, maybe if I put them up and more people can see them, because more people do come to YouTube than they do to that guy with the glasses and, and retro wear. I mean, let's be honest, folks. That may be, uh, maybe it'd be something like that. So... Uh, you know, I just really want to make this my living. Uh, right now, I'm st I put in a bunch of applications this week uh, to television stations to be a camera person. Uh, I've also put in to um, Kinko's in Xerox that are hiring here in the Springs. So maybe I'll get some replies from that. Uh, we'll We'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. I've honestly never encountered one. Oh yeah, Dirk Cork. There are trolls all over the YouTubes. <laughs> all over the trampers. Uh Do I have Borderlands 2? I wanted to know because me and my friends were getting on the game soon. We'd like you to join. Maximal, that'd be great, but unfortunately I can't play first-person shooters. Now we switch from the YouTube. See, some of you people were like, what does he talk about? Everything. And I change what I talk about at a moment's notice. Um, I can't do first-person games. I wish I could. But I get vertigo. 
Um, when screens change too quickly, my uh, my brain doesn't my brain and eyes just kind of hurt, and I start to get this kind of temple. Well, temples are down here, so this pain just above my temples, and it's horrible, 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 awful brain <laughs> headaches. Um, that's actually when I get my migraines, is when I watch that. My friend had, uh, Max, had, uh, what was it? Wasn't Borderlands, although he did have Borderlands. Uh, Bioshock, Bioshock 2, and I watched 15 minutes of that, and I had to drive home, and I had a headache for the next four to five hours. It does not go away. It's just really, really bad. Um, yeah, it's it's just... Justin's too old for those new hippity hop games like F first person shooter. Yeah, the hippin' and the hoppin' and the pippin' and the poppin'. You kids with your Pac Man video games and your Dan Fogelberg. Me. <laughs> but never see the light of day, those hairstyles. Oh, Johnny, I was actually talking to a friend of mine who had. Uh, a shirt, but she cut it off. Uh, why? Why do? Why do? And um, anyways, she cut it so that she cut the neck hole out so that it was a bigger neck hole so that it would slide off the shoulder. I was like, oh, that really looks good on you. And she's like, it's a cut off shirt. And I was like, you got you forget. I grew up in the eighties. To me, that's really hot. <laughs> I like 80s fashion. Well, except for the jeans. I don't like the jeans that women buttoned all the way up just underneath their rib cage, you know? <laughs> it was that, uh, yeah, that, that fashion for me. But the, the poofy shirts, oh, I love the poofy shirts. The, I still, yeah, no, I still like the 80s po poofy shirts on the girls. Oh, yeah. What am I playing these days? Uh, RF Paji. I am actually playing a lot of Animal Crossing. Um, I've got the Animal Crossing in my on my floor right now uh, in my Pikachu 3DS, and then on my Japanese 3DS, which is right over there. And I will have to scooch across so you don't see. Um, do I have my Japanese three yet? Button up. Pantage complete. All right. What do I have in my? Uh, oh, I'm still playing uh, Monster Hunter Tri-G. Let me make sure. Yeah, Monster Hunter Tri-G. Uh, still playing that in here, but I also downloaded a brand new game. Oh, system update. Hold on. Now it's going to restart. I've been playing this one. It's, uh, I'll tell you what the name of it is here in a moment if I can remember it. But basically what it is, is it's a uh, reverse commando. Yes, of course, Quebecer. Hey, Quebecer, how's it going? <laughs> Femi, uh, you say you talk about music, you sing too? I do. Um, I was actually the king and the king and I. Uh, but it's this racing game that I'm trying to see if it's a, you can play this. And basically what it is, it's a racing simulator where you raise a horse and when you go to the race you play a game of solitaire and how well you do in solitaire depends on how fast your horse goes and then you kind of choose a path for your horse to go and then you do a, a, a final last one where you, you whip the horse to, to get him past the, the, the line 
And it's a very interesting game that I actually have not started up yet because I really want to try and see if it's a you can play this. I want to s s have a good two hours to just sit down and do stuff. So I was actually going to do that today, and I've been seeing your name pop up, and I just want to say it's wonderful to see you again, Miss Na Young. I hope that everything's going very, very well for you, and I've been missing you, and I've actually thought about you quite a bit in the streams when I don't see your name and uh, whenever I see women's wrestling I always think of you so I hope that everything's going well for you and uh, we've been missing you so glad to have you back from Ozland Derby Derby Owners Club is a great game actually I do I still have my horse from Derby Owners? I got a zebra from Derby Owners, and I, I. But then they took it out of the Dave and Buster's up in Denver, and so I haven't played it since. But that was a great game. It was a great game. Running slow in Venezuela. RF Paji, uh. You hang in there. <laughs> Venezuela. Venezuela, wow. It's so wonderful to, to see so many uh, people come in from so many different places. I just, that was my phone telling me that we've got these Friday fireworks at the baseball stadium today. And if I had any money to go, we would go to see some baseball because I love to watch baseball at... Uh, at the Sky Sox. We, um, Sky Sox is the, uh, what is it, the AAA team? Or what are they, are they called? The double, yeah, I don't know. But, uh, they're, they're the, the Rockies, you know, the, the farming team for the Rockies and stuff. It, lots of, lots of fun. Melbourne, Australia! Oh my god, Fex. I'm gonna say Fex. P H E X E. Fex or is it Fexy? You are very Fexy there from Melbourne, Australia. Triple A, okay, yeah, yeah. I, I, I just know I enjoy baseball. That's that's what I know. Yeah, they the the Sky Sox, purple and black. <laughs> but I I love watching or, or no, that's the Rockies. Uh, the uh, purple and black uh, Sky Sox. You know, I don't know what the Sky Sox colors are. Some tickets for it. Martian buddy, are you are you Colorado Springs? So many countries, it's wonderful. I gotta tell you, um let me unlock everything here and uh one of the things I love, I just adore, is getting postcards from people. And every time I get a postcard or a package, I post it. Uh, I've got a map that I specifically put up for this uh, thing, but um, I've got a map full of pins. And I've got a pin in Osaka. Japan and uh, one in Korea, which just made my day. The, the Southern Korea, and then I've got some from Finland and Norway, bunch of things from the UK, Poland, Germany, Austria, France, Spain, uh, Canada. Got a bunch in Canada, uh, Alaska, and all these things. And then I actually even have one. A postcard from South Africa and I and for these I actually go on when I get my postcard or, or whatever or letters I I go online I try and get as close as I can to that I mean I try and get on top of the city so that I'm squishing the city with the pin um, so yeah hey if, if I, I don't have anything in Australia and I don't have any, so please, if you 
can, send me a postcard, and I would love that. And I will put in a pin and give you a big shout-out on, on the stream. Avoids Carmen San Diego joke. Tell you what. In a few months, I'll take pictures. That'd be wonderful, Miss Nye Young. I would love to see some pictures and stuff. And, you know, if you're watching this on YouTube, please, you know, uh, send me a message on YouTube. Uh, I'll write PM on, on YouTube, and I'll be happy to send you uh, the, the address to send uh, your postcard or whatever. And same thing with you guys. If you want to uh, send me a postcard or something, I would love that. Uh, just send me a PM or go to Jewario, J-E-W-W-A-R-I-O, two W's, at live.com, L-I-V-E dot com. And that's my email. Happy to send you my mailing address for that, and uh, we'd love that. Oh, you are a local of the Springs. Martian buddy. Wow. Yeah, Martian? Well... That would be wonderful. Where would I, uh, would, would you have him at, at will call or where, I, I guess, how would I get, a, <laughs> get him from there? And maybe some typical Dutch candy. I would love that. And, and I, uh, I've been getting a lot of people wanting to send me candies and stuff. So, you know, thank you. I, I've still got to some finish candy that I've got to finish. I really didn't mean that. That just sort of popped out. So anyways, I've got some finished candy <laughs> uh, that I have to uh, do one. I've got some English candy. The ones that I still have to do are the Fotzer Mint, the Fotzer de Capo, and this uh, salmiak, uh, salmiaki. Uh, no, no, not the salmiaki. Yeah, the salmiaki. I've had that sitting there for a long time, and I really want to finish it. It's this... Uh... Yeah, I'm finished. I, I'm just... Um... Les jaunes, uh, uh, that candy. Then I've got some... British candy, some flake and whisper that we're going to be doing, and then I've got German candies. So yes, I, I would love candies from anywhere. Sent me a message on YouTube. Cool. Well, I could swing over or something, or I can mail them. They're corporate passes, so they're good for the rest of the season. Ooh. Well, Ma hold on. Before I get into that, Dirk Cork. Um, Martian buddy. You know what? Just send me a PM and just, just mail them. We'll be that, that'd be, you know, that'd be fine. And thank you very much. Uh, it's nice to see another person from the Springs on here. That That's, uh, <laughs> and it's very kind of you. Thank you very, very much. That that's that's very kind of you. Your favorite meal was shabu shabu. Now, I'll although I do really enjoy shabu shabu. When I went to Japan, I think we ate katsudon almost every day, and we didn't get sick of it. I love katsudon. I love ramen. Uh, okonomiyaki has become a fast favorite of mine. I'm still trying to get a taste for takoyaki, but I really want to eat more because I love octopus. Um, yeah. Colorado people got to stick together, yo. Word. <laughs> Cody, um, I only if I only add people that I actually know on my on my personal Facebook, but 
I do have a Juwario site that I'm going to start updating more and a, a, a Facebook a Juwario fan page. So that, but I only add people I know because I got kind of screwed when I was adding people, and somebody said something to a you know family, and I couldn't have that. So I only add people I know. So thank you for understanding. <laughs> but I do have a, a a fan site there that I'll be starting to do stuff more on. But so sorry. Um. As for Ritter Rum or Mozart Kuglin, I really enjoyed Mozart Kuglin, but I really like Marzipan. But no, Ritter Rum. Ritter Rum all the way. Because, good God, it's rum. It's rum raisin. Oh my god, it's so good. And I actually like the Ritter rum more than I liked the, the Ritter sport. I don't know why, but the, the, the Ritter rum blocks were just so good. Just so good. Just so good. <laughs> Pretty sure you have a man crush on me? Oh, thanks. <laughs> That's cool. That's cool. I don't mind. <laughs> if you need a free senior IT dude, let me know. Happy to do it. Oh, wow. Well, thank you. Lots at IBM. <laughs> I, you know, and I, I wanted to be IT, but the school I went to just didn't. They just did not teach me what I wanted, what I needed to know. It was, they might as well have just said, here, here's a book, go off and learn it on your own. It was awful. It was, it was awful, horrible, no good, very bad. So, I know all dreams fall down, right? Ritter Sport is so good, but once, once I got my teeth into just the little blocks of the Ritter rum that came individually packaged, that was it. That was it. It was just all yum. What's my thoughts on the preview for MLP Season 4? You know, I don't play a lot of sports games. Um, I just don't. The, the ones that I play are Power Pros. And I like Power Pros because... It's just a fun game. I, I think the hockey game that I played the most was... Um... Crap, what was my... Uh... Blades of Steel. Blades of Steel was the, the, the hockey game that I played. I don't play a lot of sports games. So to tell you the honest to goodness truth, yeah, I'm probably not going to play it. PS Guitarist, absolutely. You can totally add me on. Oh, and hey, my uh, my DS is all charged. -ed. Major League Pony, that's what it means. Uh, it stands for Major League Pony. Um, and for those of you who want to add me, I'm just going to do this now since I'm on YouTube's. I'm just going to show the image. And you can screen cap it, or you can just look at it for a while. But this is my friend code. Just make sure that you say that you add me, and that you add my, uh, and that you give me your um, friend code as well. I'm not at 100 yet, so I've still got plenty of room. But there you go. 09032741885. And if you want to add in Yankee J, because he also has a U, uh, well, not a YouTube, but he's got his own 3DS. If you want to add in Yankee J, one five zero four five six five six eight two four four.
That's for Yankee J. And be sure to tell me which one you add. If you add Yankee J or if you add me. Um, or if you add both, you know. But maybe just keep it to one. But yeah, uh, now since the screens on the Twitch chat go too fast, and since I'm just doing the Twitch chat, send me a PM on YouTube and, uh, you know, or, or leave a comment and say, hey, I'm adding this, you know, do this. Halo Sage, yes, of course you can. Uh, yes, uh, Halo Sage, please do. Um, on the Wii U, it's just you, Wario. On the Wii, you'll have to... Excuse me, because the Wii's upstairs. <laughs> um, but send me your uh, send me your Wii friend code. I'm actually not on my Wii... Get your minds out of the gutter. Uh, I'm not actually on my Wii very much as I've kind of switched over to the Wii U. But I still play Wii games on, on the Wii U and stuff. Uh, so yeah. Not a problem. Massachusetts is no better. Now see, I want to I want to see Connecticut and Massachusetts because for me I just wanna I enjoy uh just seeing places. <laughs> I like quiet. Um I know a lot of people say that places are boring. I like quiet. I like places that have wide open spaces that you can just be take a book some cheese and a bottle of wine or some grape soda and just have a, you know, relaxing time underneath. I like that. I don't mind that we don't have a lot of nighttime stuff going on. But that's me. That's me. Like the Grand Canyon. Oh, dude. Zed, yeah, that was that was a fantastic time. You just get to be. We, we've got, I live so close to the mountains here. Um, my buddies and I, when I was in high school, we, and in college, we would just hike up the mountains for a little while and just be. There's a place that you can drive very close to Cheyenne Mountain. And this there's this one place that has an outlook. And it's quiet. It's in a, yeah, it's just beautiful. And the Cheyenne Mountain Zoo, wonderful zoo to go to. Um, and you can drive past it on the way up to the Will Rogers Shrine. And the Will Rogers Shrine is just amazing. Just amazing. Oh, Vermont is gorgeous. I'd love to go to Vermont sometime. Live a live on Super Famicom. I have not played that Centauri. But I have heard of it. I just have never played it. Painfully boring without money and a car. Okay, yeah, that can be a problem. <laughs> Get some taco makings. Hey, have a good taco. Taco Friday, everybody. We should we should all go and do tacos. Uh, our F Paji. Um, let me actually. Okay, <laughs> I'll add you uh, after the stream. On my one thing. Don't forget, I the 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 Twitch chat goes kind of fast for me, so don't forget to what uh, RF Paji and Martian Buddy. Don't forget to actually send those to my Twitch. Or to juario at live.com because I'm I'm not going to be able to write this stuff down because I don't have anything. You you too, Cody. So just send me a PM with that as well. Okay. <laughs> just want, um, yeah, there's there's wonderful places, and you can do pretty much everything here without a uh, without a um, without any money. 
walking through Manitou Springs is free. Uh, hiking's free. Without a car, that can be a problem. But we have really nice bus service here. But then again, that goes into the money. But getting on the bus is very, very inexpensive. Um, and we've got a good bus service here. It's not like a major metropolitan city where you have a chance to get mugged. No, you don't get mugged on our buses. You just don't. So it's, they're, they're nice. They're nice and clean. <laughs> Is this my first stream? Facts, I've actually been doing this for, gosh, almost four years. Three years? Three, three and a half years? I've been streaming for a couple of years now. It's It's been a while, yeah. But, uh, yeah, it, it, it's been a while. But now you know, and knowing is half the battle, G.I. Joe. There you go. <laughs> Streaming. Uh, I stream every Friday from 11. Well, not every Friday, but I'm going to start doing every Friday again. Uh, every Friday from uh, from 11 to 1. I've been doing it 11 to 1 for a long time. I used to do Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. And then I just kind of went down to Fridays. There were a couple of times that I had to switch Mondays because I worked on Fridays. But, yeah. Max, that means a lot to me. Thank you very much. Uh, you love my vids. The only reason why you went to that guy with the glasses. We'll keep on going to that guy with the glasses. There's a lot of good people there. There's a lot of good talent. They're picking up some new talent all the time. Uh, you can find my stuff on Retroware TV. Dot com. You can also find my stuff on youcanplaythis.com. And as a matter of fact, everybody should watch the new Famicom Dojo because Mario's in it. Oh, uh, 11 to 1 what time? 11 to 1 Mountain Daylight Time. I'm in the mountain region, so it's 7 hours uh, minus 7 hours Greenwich. GWD. Uh, Lost Ben Girl says you should try to go to Chipansingo once in a while. Lots of space where I live. Granted, I live on a small mountain, but there you go. <laughs> Chap Chapasingo. Chapasingo. Where is that? Let's let's find out. Chapasingo. Find out where Chapasingo is. Chapancingo, New in city in Mexico. I've never been to Mexico. I would love to go to Mexico. I hear there's certain places that you go in Mexico and you, you know, you just do not pass. You know, you you go this far no further or else you're going to be in, in hurting. But uh, Chapancingo, that sounds very nice. And I love the mountains. Uh, Lost Ben Girl. I, I, I really do. Uh, Pike's Peak is just absolutely gorgeous. Greenwich? Sorry, Centauri. <laughs> Never been in Mexico. I've been in hour, a couple of hours to the board for years. Hey, Doom Pod. Yeah, and... Uh, well, anyways, in, in, in these final nine minutes here, uh, just to kind of tell you what I'm going to be up to. Like I had said, I'm going to be doing a lot more on YouTube. Uh, I'm going to be doing, a, putting up, bringing my, you can, uh, I like candy. I'm bringing that back to my Juwario, to this stream. I'm going to be uh, bringing out... I have my calendar up there, uh, bringing out an old video on Wednesdays until I'm done with old videos, and stream on Fridays, either on YouTube or Twitch.tv, and hopefully Saturdays will have new videos. Now, they're not going to be a new video this Saturday because I've been busy looking for jobs, <laughs> but there will be a new one next week, and the new one will actually be on Hatsune Miku uh, 
F, Project Diva F. And because that's coming out into the States, and I want to show you guys what it's going to be like if you haven't downloaded the demo already. So it's going to be a quickie, that's going to be the thing, and then I think the week after is going to be the new Mario Monologues. That's going to be weird because it's been like three years since I've done a Mario Monologue. Uh, so that'll be a lot of fun. And yeah. And then the pipeline. And I've gotten so many people who like the pipeline in the new format. It makes me feel very good. Uh, I was going to put up a new pipeline right after the Nintendo. But to tell you the truth, I, I looked at the script and I was just reiterating what the Nintendo people said, what the Nintendo Direct was, and I didn't give any new information. So, you know, it's 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 like that saying, does this need to be said? Does this need to be said now? Does this need to be said now by me? And if all those are no, then you should just keep your mouth shut. Uh, what, what's his face from the, uh, the TV show, uh, from the late night show, the, the, the Scottish man? I can't even remember people's names. This is me. I'm Dory. Hi. <laughs> I've changed from a fish and from being Ellen DeGeneres into being a human. That that's that's me. Um <laughs> Craig Ferguson, there you go. He's the one who doesn't just need to be said now, doesn't need to be said by me. So there you go. Any news about the Famicom and Writer? Since it's not on this, and I should be doing a you can, uh, I should be doing a, a message and putting it up on YouTube about the Famicom and Writer. So I say this every week because people always ask me. Yes, um, Famicom and Writers right now on hold uh, because one, I don't have a job, and I need to pay bills. Bills actually allow me to stay here. So I've got to find a job and once I find a good job and I have a, a you know a sh set schedule then we start filming Famicom and Rider. I've got all the costumes uh in there and to kind of help thank YouTube and thank you all for being in my first YouTube stream I'm going to show you one of the helmets from the costumes. Now which one should I show? I'll show one of them. Uh, I think I showed this one in one of the other streams, but I'm just going to show it on this one. Um, so this is the this is one of the helmets that I'm using for the Famicom and Rider uh, bad guys. This is a bad guy right here. He's a let me get into the light here. Okay, he's a bug. And these were done by my good friend Featherweight. Uh, you can see the antenna. These are amazing. Uh, helmets and the the jaw does move it does uh, so it, it's uh, so yeah this is one so it's I didn't take the money and run I swear I did not <laughs> uh, we have uh, costumes and and other stuff Back in here, in the the room here, I have costumes and things back here that I'm not going to show you because one is the second writer. And the second writer is all quiet and stuff. Uh, this is actually where I filmed the uh, the pipelines in my basement. Uh, you can see the 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 lights there and then the green screen. So. Yeah, this is a uh, this is where we film the pipelines. So yeah, this is where I film everything. <laughs> it's uh, uh, so right now it's on hold until I can get some money. We're gonna try and film all the the fight scenes in one take. Well, in one go, it'll probably be you know within a month that we'll be filming them within the month when we start filming them. So I don't know when we'll start. And then right after that, that's when we'll start filming uh, regular things. 
uh, the the regular video. So I don't. I wish I had more information, but it's just. <laughs> uh, but everything will be sent out, and, and you know everything, the DVDs and all Johnny, um, eventually. So we're 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 getting there. It's just going to take some time, uh, more time than I thought. So based on the master system, and uh, Tianzi asked, uh, "Hey, you are a big fan. Please tell me where. Uh, how did you learn Japanese?" Tianzi actually learned it. Um, I think it's okay if I go over time here because that's going to take a little bit longer than three minutes. I actually taught myself how to read and write. When I got my Japanese games for the Famicom and I started playing games on the Famicom, I actually started writing down how what they said even though I didn't know what they were and I taught myself how to read and write hiragana and katakana. Now then, then I took classes in college, but a good, a very good help, and I would suggest this for everybody, and I really do, and I completely mean this from my heart, Manga Gene. Pick these up. They're not very much. Manga Gene. There's uh, Basic Japanese, Part 2, and 1. Manga Gene is no longer around, but they still produce books. But they don't produce the magazine anymore. And what it was is that it would it would talk about uh, it would show a manga. So they like uh, yeah let let's let's find a lesson in here that's that's a good lesson. Um, Sumimasen. I'm sorry. Sumimasen. So they'll tell you what it is. They'll show you how it is. And then they'll give you some ideas about it. And then they'll show a manga actually using it. And they'll translate the manga. They'll have the, uh, they'll have the actual writing style, the actual kana. Then they'll romanize it. Then they'll put it into direct English. And then they'll put it into what it is in a good English sentence. So you actually, it's, it's really, this helps so much. And I'm actually now better at reading Japanese than I am speaking it. Um, manga gene. They're not paying me to plug this. I'm totally doing this on my own because I would highly suggest it. But yeah. Basically, Japanese video games, I went to college, and then I learned this. But I I have to tell you, you totally got to keep on, if you learn it, you got to keep on doing it. You got to keep on practicing, speaking. You got to do it all the time, because if you don't use it, you'll lose it. I used to speak fourth grade level. Now, my speaking is, you know basic, very, very basic, less, you know, kindergarten, kindergartners speak better than I do. It's not very good. But that's where I learned it. Anyways, my manga gene sellout. Next episode of You Can Play This Movie is very interesting. I have no idea. <laughs> but hopefully I'll, I'll, I'll come up with something. Um, anyways. Thank you all for being here and and thanks to all of you just discovering me now on YouTube. I hope you like this and next Friday we'll uh we'll try this one again and if it just doesn't work out, we'll go to Twitch and we'll just do back and forth every week or uh you know, maybe I'll just do you know, a couple hours here, a couple hours on Twitch. We'll see what we, what we do. But anyways, thank you all so very much for coming out. Hope you all had a great time and if you're watching the the recorded version of this. Thanks for coming out. And uh, I usually end my videos or my streams uh, with a little Mr. Rogers because people used to call me the Mr. Rogers of that guy with the glasses. I don't know how true that was or is, but uh, you know, he's, he's one of the people who really inspires me. And uh, so I end it with his song.
It's such a good feeling to know you're alive. It's such a happy feeling you're growing inside. And when you wake up ready to say, I think I'll make a snappy new day. It's such a good feeling, a very good feeling, a feeling you know that I'll be back when the day is new and I'll have more ideas for you. And you'll have things you'll want to talk about. I will too. Thanks so much, everybody, for coming out and having a great time with me. Uh, please have a wonderful, safe weekend. Uh, please drive safe, be safe, have fun, and we'll see you again next week. Bye, everybody.